Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the third lecture on acoustic instabilities in aerospace propulsion. In the last class, we talked about uh, very basics of acoustics, what is sound, how sound is characterized in terms of uh, frequency, amplitude and so on and uh, then we spoke about the definition of decibel and then we talked about various kind of uh, uh, sounds that we hear in our day to day life and what are the typical decibel levels and so on. Then we said that we want to characterize sound, the propagation of sound mathematically. So we are starting from the basic equations of fluid mechanics, which is conservation of mass and momentum and energy and so on, and the state equation. So we derived the conservation of mass, which is the continuity equation, and the momentum equation from um, basic first principles. We also spoke about uh, uh, the state equation and and so on. Uh, today. We are going to uh, talk about how we derive the wave equation from these equations. So uh, before I uh, proceed to this, let us start with a story. So there was this uh, professor who was working um, very late and then he was trying to go home and he was let us say drunk and it was something like 3 a.m. in the morning and uh, he suddenly discovered that he has lost his marriage, his or her marriage ring and then the professor decided to search for the wedding ring. And the professor was searching on the street and wherever he could we think he, uh, wherever he thought it would be there and then comes a student graduate student who is working very hard and he is seeing he saw the professor and he asked the professor professor what are you doing uh, it is so late in the night professor said I lost my wedding ring and I am searching for it and the student said okay let me uh, try to help you I will join you and uh, uh, I, I will try to help you the student also wanted to impress the professor and so on. Uh, so both professor and student are starting to search for the professor's wedding ring. Uh, the professor was uh, really worried because if uh, uh, he or she goes home, the spouse will be very angry. The professor can be a man or a woman, doesn't matter. Uh, and then pretty soon, the student discovered that the professor is searching for the wedding ring only under the lamp post. So the student uh, found this very amusing, and he went and asked the professor, uh, "Professor, is there any guarantee that you would have lost the?" wedding ring what guarantee is there that you would have lost the wedding ring uh, under a lamp post it is highly unlikely. The professor said look I made an assumption I assume that the ring will be there under a lamp post then the student asks, I mean it is a very bad assumption the professor says uh, this is the only place where I can look so I have made the assumption that it is under the lamp post so I look where I can. So this is kind of true with our mathematical analysis also that is we make assumptions so that uh, we can simplify things and we can deal with things. So often the assumptions are not because they are the way it is so. We make assumptions so that we can uh, do things with the equations and then we look for situations where uh, uh, the uh, assumptions are applicable and then we say that the solutions we have derived or the equations we have derived are applicable under these set of conditions and so on. So uh, we derived partial differential equation and they were coupled partial differential equation and they were non-linear and, and so on and I said that it was very hard to get a uh, very general solution for these things. So the uh, idea is that we need to uh, get some solutions because we cannot just sit there uh, without any hope or helplessly and say that these are complicated equations we can do we cannot do anything about it. So we do the same thing that the professor did so we can look under the lamp post where he we can look. So we make assumptions so that we can uh, solve the equations that uh, uh, we have derived under whatever conditions it is possible. So what we are going to do, I will let me summarize. What we are going to do is to assume that uh, uh, we uh, we have a very small amplitude disturbances, and then we derive we, we linearize this nonlinear equation. Look for a set of uh, uh, linear equations. Uh, or so, somehow simplify this nonlinear equations into a simplified linearized version and then we uh, try to make more assumptions about uh, the quantities and then try to see if we can uh, derive some kind of 
uh, simple equation, simple linear equation, which can be solved with paper and pencil, and that has uh, its own utility, no matter how simplifying the assumptions that we have. So, in order to refresh your memory, I will write down the equations. Uh, This is the conservation of mass or the continuity equation, and the momentum equation is rho times and uh, I want to say that I am doing everything in one dimension, but the three dimension is not uh, too difficult. And uh, uh, recall that S naught is constant. That means we are saying that we are uh, talking about a, a constant entropy process. And now what we need to do is uh, we want to um, linearize these equations. So. Uh, you can clearly see the non-linear term here. This is going to give a lot of trouble in terms of solving the equation. And so, what we want to do is to uh, um, say that the perturbations in pressure, velocity, density, and temperature are fairly small compared to the mean values. So, we uh, take the equations, perturb the equation around the mean. That way, we derive the so-called acoustic equations. And, uh, and and then we say that these uh, perturbations are really small. So, the advantage of this is that you can actually uh, uh, drop out terms which are product of two perturbation quantities uh, that way you get a linear equation and which we can uh, solve. So, this whole process is called linear acoustics. So, so, the assumption here is that perturbations in pressure, density, temperature, velocity are much density are much smaller compared to their mean values. So, this would be what we refer to as linear acoustics and we also assume a homogeneous fluid and we say that the uh, uh, the mean quantities the mean pressure mean density and mean temperature are independent of the position of the medium and we'll also say that we are having a quiescent medium that means there's no mean velocity associated with the medium so the mean quantities uh, i will denote the mean by a over bar p bar rho bar t bar r uh, constant and u bar equal to 0. So, we have a constant thermodynamic mean properties and the mean flow velocity is 0 that means there is a quiescent medium. Uh, so, we now write all the variables. So, let us say pressure equal to uh, we, we write the variables as a sum of a mean quantity and a fluctuating quantity. density equal to mean density plus fluctuating density uh, temperature equal to t bar plus t prime u equal to u bar plus u prime. So, here we are saying that we have a quiescent medium. So, we drop this term and in general you could have the pressure and mean pressure and density and temperature varying, but in this particular case uh, we are keeping them as constant. Uh, we also say that P prime over P bar is much less than 1 rho prime over rho bar. Its magnitude is much less than 1 T prime over T bar. 
is much less than 1 and, and, and so on. So, now, uh, so that means, if p prime by uh, p bar is much lower than 1 and rho prime by rho bar is much lower than 1, then this quantity is very small. So, we can actually drop terms that second order quantity that means, terms that involve products of these quantities. So, let us now perturb this equation and write this in terms of this uh, mean and uh, mean quantity and the perturbation quantity and then try to proceed to linearize the equation. So, let us start with continuity equation. So, when you linearize this you will get dou by dou t of rho bar plus rho prime plus dou by dou x of rho bar plus rho prime into u bar plus u prime equal to 0. Now, I said that there is no u bar. So, we can simply erase this term and just say uh, u prime equal to 0. So, let us expand this equation and look at each term. So, um, rho bar is the time average value of mean uh, time average value of density. So, that is a average quantity in terms of time. So, by definition it is independent of time. So, the first term will drop out. So, you keep only dou rho prime by dou t plus let us expand this term. So, we will have dou by dou x of rho bar u prime plus dou by dou x of rho prime u prime equal to 0. Now, this is a second order quantity of course, it is a nonlinear quantity and the trick here is that we do not want to deal with nonlinearities we are trying to linearize. So, we will drop this. Uh, we also assume that um, uh, rho bar is a constant it is independent of space. So, we can take it outside the derivative. So, in the final equations become so let me say rho bar equal to constant So, this would be the perturbation equation for the continuity equation. So, it is like the acoustic equation for continuity. So, we need to uh, do the same procedure next with the momentum equations. So, let us do that uh, in momentum equation you will have rho bar plus rho prime multiplied by dou by dou t of u bar plus u prime uh, plus u bar plus u prime into dou by dou x of u bar plus u prime equal to minus dou by dou x of p bar plus p prime. So, let us uh, simplify matters. We uh, said there is no u bar term. So, we can drop wherever there is u bar first and so let us say rho bar plus rho prime into dou u prime by dou t plus u prime dou u prime by dou x equal to minus. We said that the mean pressure is independent of space. So, we can drop the term uh, and dou, dou, dou p bar by dou x can be dropped. So, you will have just dou x. Now, let us expand this out. So, you will have rho bar dou u prime by dou t plus rho bar u prime dou u prime by dou x plus rho prime dou u prime by dou t plus rho prime u prime by prime by dou x equal to minus dou p prime by dou x. So, if you remember the prime stands for the fluctuating quantity or the acoustic quantity and once again the bar stands for the mean quantity. So, now we look. So, this is a first order quantity we can keep that. So, we keep this. This is a uh, second order quantity we drop this is also a second order quantity we drop this is a third order quantity. Uh, so, let us write this is second order this is third order. So, we keep only the leading order. So, our um, equation now becomes rho bar dou u prime by dou t equal to minus dou p prime by 
the like. So, this is the acoustic momentum equation. Next, we want to linearize the equation of state. For that, uh, so we, we, we said that uh, p equal to uh, p of rho comma s naught and remember that we said that uh, we are having isentropic process here. So, let us take a graphical approach now, uh, let us take a look at a graph of uh, uh, p versus rho and let us say it is varying in some fashion. Let us say, uh, let us mark our mean quantity of p bar and rho bar, let us say this is our mean state and we perturb things around it. So, here this is the region we are looking in this region. So, so we uh, uh, although this function could be a general curve, in this small region uh, the pressure is fluctuating about the mean value and density is fluctuating around, around the mean value and this is a really small region and there we can say that this variation is linear. So, we have linear variation. So, in the vicinity of this base flow or the mean quantities we are having a uh, linear uh, linear variation. So, uh, we can um, write a linear relationship or, or write equation of uh, straight line. So, mathematically we can use a uh, Taylor series for example. So, uh, uh, pressure can be written as uh, can be expanded by a Taylor series about its base value plus dou p by dou rho at constant entropy times rho minus rho bar plus half into dou squared p by dou rho squared into rho minus rho bar whole squared plus ta 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 higher order terms. So, let us uh, throw out the higher order terms and um, write a uh, keep only the linear term. So, we can say, so we we drop them. So, now we can rewrite this equation as p minus p bar equal to dou rho by sorry dou p by dou rho at s naught times rho minus rho bar. So, this would be the linearized equation of state and if you look carefully, we know that this is our uh, p prime and this is our rho prime. So, basically we are having p prime equal to dou p by dou rho at constant entropy times rho prime. Now, this is a constant value and we can denote it by some constant. So, we uh, say that dou p by dou rho, let us call it c square, this is by definition. So, uh, we can say that p prime equal to c square times rho prime. So, at this point it is not clear um, uh, that c is, uh, it is not clear that c is the uh, speed of sound at, at this point. Uh, we will, uh, we will have to wait a little bit before we can um, see what actually c physically means whether it is the, whether it is the speed of sound and, and so on and so forth. So, let me uh, summarize the equations that we derived. Uh, so, let us call this equation 1 call this equation 2, call this equation 3. Now, uh, I must uh, say there is something really annoying in the uh, convention used in acoustics that is uh, they, uh, if you read any textbooks, uh, you keep the primes till some point and then suddenly the author drops the prime. 
So generally the quantity without prime so for example rho prime would actually be written as rho I mean uh, will be written as rho prime sometimes uh, but p prime is staying as p prime but if you uh, the mean pressure will be denoted by p bar or something uh, but after some time uh, and, and uh, uh, I mean so this dropping of primes is sometimes quite annoying but I will try to be consistent and keep this uh, uh, notations correct yeah. Thank you. So, and um, in the convention, sometimes rho bar is written as rho, and and it's very mixed up and so on. But it's better to be consistent and keep the following, keep the uh, uh, same notation about primes and bars, and 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 just keep it. So now what we do is we can. Uh, so we next uh, next we proceed to derive the wave equation. So what we can do is to take uh, dou by dou t of equation 1 and subtract dou by dou x of equation 2 uh, and then you will get uh, and we also use p prime equal to uh, c squared rho prime. So if you do that here you will get so you are going to get uh, 1 over c squared dou p prime by dou t plus rho bar dou v prime by dou x equal to 0 and uh, here uh, so if I take a time derivative of this I will get 1 over c squared d squared p prime by dt squared plus rho bar dou squared u by dou t dou x equal to 0. Uh, if I take the space derivative of this equation 2 what I will get is rho bar dou squared u prime by dou x dou t equal to minus dou squared p over dou x squared. Now you can uh, subtract this equation from this uh, subtract the uh, bottom equation from the top equation and then you can get 1 over c squared d squared p over d t squared equal to dou squared p by dou x squared. So this is the wave equation or the this is the wave equation or the so called classical wave equation and uh, we have in at looked at the physical meaning of C although you might have uh, I think all of you know that C stands for speed of sound but we will have to see very carefully that uh, what, what C is. So let me uh, so I, I must mention that I made an assumption here that uh, uh, dou squared u by dou t dou x equal to dou squared u by dou x dou t that is why I could subtract the term off or cancel the term out. And, uh, uh, of course that is okay when the, uh, uh, the velocity is a continuous function of x and time then you can swap the derivatives. So, uh, so thus we have derived the wave equation and let me make a few remarks about the wave equation. Uh, we derived the wave equation from uh, fluid mechanic conservation laws it is just from fundamentals. Uh, The second thing I want to say those of you who are mathematically inclined will notice that this is a hyperbolic partial differential equation PDE stands for partial differential equation in fact you will see that the characteristics are dx by dt equal to plus or minus c uh, I am not going to go into too much of a detail but if you are mathematically inclined you can uh, pursue this line. And, uh, we did not use the linearized equation of energy but actually if you work out the problem and if you work out the linearized equation of energy it will turn out that the linearized equation for 
continuity equation is identical to the linearized equation for energy equation in this case. It they may be different in some other cases that is when, when you have um, uh, temperature gradient or when you have combustion and so on uh, these equations may be different but right now they are the same. So we uh, um, see this one dimensional wave equation we can I, I want to make a few more observations if you do a three dimensional derivation of it uh, in, in three dimension you would have 1 over c square dou squared p by dou t squared equal to del squared p. In fact uh, I have started forgetting my primes so I think this will happen to you also so please remember to be consistent with the uh, notation and uh, you can also derive the wave equation in terms of acoustic velocity or velocity potential and so on you can uh, do this as a um, homework. So in terms of acoustic velocity you will also get an identical wave equation. Now the uh, I want to uh, speak about certain characteristics of this equation uh, this is a linear equation of course we linearized our original equation so naturally we will end up with a linear equation. And this is one of the most studied uh, equations in uh, maths and in fact if you had a minus sign here or here if you had a minus sign then you know what equation this becomes it is a Laplace equation which has completely different characteristics. So the advantage of linearity is that if you have linear equation we will have linear solutions and we can superpose the solution. So if you have two solutions you can add them or multiply one by a constant multiply the other by another constant we can construct more and more solutions. Uh, the wave equation is also a homogeneous there are no terms on the uh, there, are no, uh, there are no other source terms if the source term then the wave equation will become uh, inhomogeneous. Uh, uh, so this wave equation does not um, speak about the production of sound it only talks about the uh, propagation of sound we did not consider any sound sources in this and uh, sound source of course will come in will come in the second half of the course. Uh, a, uh, a similar equation can be derived for the propagation of electromagnetic uh, uh, waves in free space of course it looks slightly different. Similarly, you can also have a wave equation for Schrodinger equation. So this is a very important class of equations that has been uh, well studied by the mathematicians and the physicists. Uh, historically, the only wave equation was derived first by D. Lambert for oscillation of strings. and Euler in 1766 derived this equation specifically for sound propagation in fluids. last comment the wave equation is a second order partial differential equation 
and it will have infinite number of solutions. The specific solutions can be obtained. Of course, you need to specify uh, uh, the particular boundary conditions and the initial conditions and so on. So, we will look for solutions such as traveling wave solutions, standing wave solutions, etcetera. And uh, first, we would look for uh, looking at uh, first, we look for deriving, deriving generalized solutions. Uh, so, the solution procedure is uh, quite simple, we will factorize this wave equation. Uh, th this is the wave equation, and we assume that d squared p prime by do x do t equal to do squared p by do t do x. So, we can actually uh, factorize this equation as follows. It is quite simple to work out. So this is the same equation. I have factorized it. You, if you expand this, uh, if you expand this equation out, you will get the equation on the top. So then we can have uh, two possibilities. One is dou p by um, you have the first operator acting on pressure equal to zero or you can also have the possibility of the second operator acting on the pressure, fluctuating pressure, uh, the second operator acting on the fluctuating pressure makes it 0. So, if you look carefully, we can, I mean you can rewrite this as dou p prime by dou x plus 1 over c dou p prime by dou t equal to 0 or we can write dou p prime by dou t plus c times dou p prime by dou x equal to 0. So, you can easily see that the c is the characteristic speed d x by d t equal to c. So, the solution a generalized solution for this would be equal to f of x minus c t. And similarly, if you look here, you can write this equation as dou p prime by dou t minus c dou p prime by dou x equal to 0. So, the characteristic speed here is dou x by uh, dou t equal to z. Oh, yeah, it should be c, sorry. Thank you. So, uh, this would be p prime equal to g of x plus c t. So, f is one, one function, g is another function. Now, you can uh, uh, write a general solution as p prime equal to f of x minus c t plus g of x plus c t. So, this would be the um, general solution. Now, it is quite easy to convince yourself that this uh, solution actually satisfies this uh, first equation and this equation actually satisfies uh, the top equation. Now, I will I will just show that. Let us make a um, uh, let us make a change of variables or a transformation that will make things easy. So, we say that uh, psi equal to x minus c t. So, uh, we say that uh, dou p prime by dou x equal to dou p prime by dou psi into dou psi by dou x. Similarly, uh, we can say that dou p prime by dou t equal to dou p prime by dou psi into dou psi by dou t. Now, uh, if you see uh, dou psi by dou x equal to 1 and uh, uh, dou psi by dou t equal to minus c. So, if you substitute this in here, I will get uh, 
So, now if I substitute this in the wave equation uh, what we had was del p by del t plus c del p by del x equal to 0. So, if you make this substitutions del p by del t is nothing but uh, minus c del p prime by del psi plus c times del p prime by del psi. You can see that this actually cancels this and you will get 0. So, therefore, uh, f of x minus c t is actually a solution to the wave equation. Similarly, if you follow the same procedure except you use uh, another variable if you use eta equal to x plus c t you can uh, prove that uh, uh, g of x plus c t is also a solution to the wave equation. Therefore, the uh, general solution for the wave equation is p prime equal to f of x minus c t plus g of x plus c t. So, I must emphasize that uh, f and g are at this stage simply arbitrary functions and we do not know what they are. They could be any functions, but the specific form of the functions depends very much on the type of initial condition that you use and the type of boundary conditions that we use. So, now let us the big question we have to ask is what is C. So, the next question is what is the meaning of C. Uh, towards this purpose uh, let us uh, let, let's just take a look at the uh, first solution P prime equal to f of x minus c t. So, if you the meaning of this is that as long as you are on the line x minus c t equal to constant you will have you will see the same pressure. So, that x minus c t is some kind of preserved quantity. So, if you have a wave shape and it moves to some other place uh, between similar points this quantity will be preserved. So, uh, let us say the you are at x 1 uh, x 1 comma t 1 at some time uh, at, at one instant and at another instant we are at x 2 comma t 2. Now, if you are on the solution then we have to make sure that x minus c t is a constant that is that's the uh, uh, that is the thing it is preserved. So, now you will say that uh, or t minus x by c some people write x minus c t sometimes you can say t minus x over c whatever. So, t 1 minus x 1 over c equal to t 2 minus x 1 over c or we can rewrite this as x 2 minus x 1 over t 2 minus t 1 equal to c. So, you can really see that t is the time taken by the wave to travel from x 1 to x 2 in this time interval t uh, t 2 minus t 1. So, therefore, c is indeed the speed of sound. Now, if you are looking at a right propagating wave now f of x minus c t is right propagating wave because the uh, velocity of the wave is it is writing on the characteristic d x over d t equal to c and so it is a right running wave. If you were to write the other solution um, uh, you have g of x minus c t uh, if you look at this solution what is preserved is uh, uh, or it can also be written as g of uh, uh, t minus x over u of x plus c. So, t 1 plus x 1 over c 1 equal to t 2 plus x 2 over c 2. So, what we can see is x 2 minus x 1 over c equal to t 1 minus t 2 or x 2 equal to x 1 minus c into t 2 minus t 1. That means actually the wave is here. You can see its wave is propagating to the left. So this is a um, left running wave. Whereas in the earlier case, we see that the wave is propagating to the right because we can see that x2 equal to x1 plus c into t2 minus t1. So this is a so-called right right running wave. So, now we can clearly see that y c is the speed of sound where yeah. 
now we can uh, uh, clearly see why c actually is the speed of sound anything else okay. uh, so uh, let us look at some more uh, things about the solution p prime equal to f of x minus ct or g is equal to x plus ct so this means that along this uh, x minus ct you have a certain shape of the wave or along x plus ct a certain shape of the wave that means we are having a solution which says that the wave shape is constant wave shape does not change the amplitude does not change only the wave just propagates so we are looking at a 1d wave only plane wave because we only have a coordinate x so it's a plane wave so let's look at the features of 1d plane wave The amplitude is always either f or g, so there is no attenuation or spreading. And the second feature is that the wave shape, the wave shape does not change during propagation. Uh, we will see later on in the course where we'll have situations where the amplitude and the shape will change during propagation but at the moment from this classical case the wave shape does not change during propagation So the uh, last thing is uh, I want to work out is to work out the relationship between the acoustic pressure and the acoustic velocity. How do we go about doing this? So we can actually uh, work this out by using the momentum equation or, uh, or the Euler equation. It is linearized version. So we are trying to derive the relationship between acoustic pressure and acoustic velocity for a plane wave. Uh, so we use the linearized Euler equation or the linearized momentum equation which is rho bar dou u prime by dou t equal to minus dou p prime by dou x. So we can do this relation separately for a right propagating wave and then for a left running wave. So let us let us denote the right propagating wave by plus and the left propagating wave by minus. So we will write dou u prime plus over dou t equal to minus 1 over rho bar dou p prime plus over dou x. So all we need to do is to well, say that so you can integrate um, this right hand side with respect to time and you will be able to get the velocity so we we can change the variables to psi equal to x minus c t then we can see that uh, dt equal to minus 1 over c d psi so d p by dx equal to and now if you substitute this in here what you can get is u plus equal to minus 1 over rho bar integral dou f by dou psi into minus 1 over c dou psi by dou psi. So this would be nothing but 1 over rho bar c integral dou f which is 
f over rho bar c if you are starting with initial conditions that are quiescent. So basically uh, we can say that uh, u plus equal to p plus divided by rho bar c. Now if you were to work out this relation for the left turning wave and that is uh, quite easy. So we say that eta equal to x plus c t and we can follow the same procedure and you can then derive the relation sorry it is uh, you follow the same procedure as for integration uh, you can uh, and then you will get the result. So it is uh, just to So you would get this relation. So uh, I there's a minus sign in front of uh, p prime. Uh, so in either case, either for a left running wave or a right running wave, the magnitude of the velocity is the uh, magnitude of the pressure divided by rho bar c. Rho bar c is a quantity called characteristic impedance. Now the only thing is for a right running wave, the velocity, the exponential velocity is uh, u plus equal to p plus divided by rho bar c for a left running wave u minus equal to minus p minus divided by rho bar c. So there is an opposite sign this is uh, although it looks strange that there is a different sign it is quite intuitively obvious. So let us look at a compression wave which is going to your right side. Now if the wave is going to the right side the gas particle will uh, if it is a compression wave the gas particle will move behind the wave to the right. So uh, then the sign should be uh, uh, plus because you are having the wave also move behind the per, the uh, velocity move also to the positive x axis. So there should be a plus whereas if the compression wave is going to the negative x axis then the particle will trail that compression wave to the negative x axis. So it will naturally have a minus sign because it is going in the opposite direction. So that is what that, that is the uh, reason for this uh, left running wave having uh, a minus sign in front of it for the expression for the acoustic velocity whereas the right running wave has a plus sign or a positive sign before the uh, expression for acoustic velocity. So in, in general in general p plus over u plus equal to p prime minus divided by so if you take the ratio of the magnitudes it will always be rho bar c. Now rho bar c is called characteristic impedance of the medium different mediums will have uh, different values for example air would be uh, the value would be around uh, uh, 400 for uh, water it would be uh, some other value for example let us work out <coughs> rho bar c would be uh, typically uh, rho would be let us say 1.2 kg per meter square into speed of sound would be typically 330 meter per second. So you will get approximately 400 uh, kilogram uh, uh, let us see meter per minus 2 second per minus 1 this unit kilogram meet, uh, meter per my, uh, kilogram per meter squared second this is called uh, this unit is referred to as Rayleigh in order to honor the great scientist Lord Rayleigh who did a 
lot of pioneering work in acoustics. Now, if you are having a, so this is the value for air. Now, if you are having another medium, medium water, so you would have rho bar is 1000 kg per meter cube for water, speed of sound is of the order of 1500 meter per second. So, rho bar c would be of the order of uh, 1.5 into 10 power 6 really. So, you can see that for different mediums the value of uh, uh, value of uh, the rho bar c the characteristic uh, characteristic impedance is quite different for uh, different medium. So, we will uh, stop here at this point what we did is I put a I, I put the absolute value sign. So, it is okay. Uh, so, to summarize what we did is we took the equations of fluid mechanics which we derived in last class, then we made assumptions of linear acoustics that means we uh, we split the uh, uh, variables into a mean quantity and a perturbation quantity. Then we said that the perturbations are very small compared to the mean. So, we actually neglect we kept the uh, quantities which are first order in the perturbations, but we neglected everything that is second order or higher and then we massaged the, these equations and derived the uh, classical wave equation. Then we actually proceeded to find the solutions to the wave equation which is um, as I uh, showed earlier uh, f of x minus c t and g of x plus c t and uh, then we also derived expressions for acoustic velocity in terms of the acoustic pressure. So, we will stop here today. Thank you. Have a good day.